Hello, uh, we are the Vandermolen family. My name's Jeff. And I'm Allie. And our son, Josiah, is um, currently in bed. Um, we're going to be reading the devotional for today. And um, the vo devotion is found, the Bible reading is found in Galatians 1, verse 11. And it's going to be read from the New Living Translation version. Dear brothers and sisters, I want you to understand that the gospel message I preach is not based on mere human reasoning. I received my message from no human source, and no one taught me. Instead, I received it by direct revelation from Jesus Christ. You know what I was like when I followed the Jewish religion, how I violently persecuted God's church. I did my best to destroy it. I was far ahead of my fellow Jews in my zeal for the, tr for the traditions of my ancestors. But even before I was born, God chose me and called me by his marvelous grace. Then it pleased him to reveal his son to me, so that I would proclaim the good news about Jesus to the Gentiles. When this happened, I did not rush out to consult with any human being, nor did I go up to Jerusalem to consult with those who were apostles before I was. Instead, I went away into Arabia, and later I returned to the city of Damascus. Then, three years later, I went to Jer Jerusalem to get to know Peter, and I stayed with him for fifteen days. The only other apostle I met at that time was James, the Lord's brother. I declare before God that what I am writing to you is not a lie. After that visit, I went north into the provinces of Syria in Cilicia, and still the churches in Christ that are in Judea didn't know me personally. All they knew was that people were saying, the one who used to persecute us is now preaching the very faith he tried to destroy, and they praised God because of me. Then fourteen years later I went back to Jerusalem again, this time with Barnabas, and Titus came along too. I went there because God revealed to me that I should go. While I was there, I met privately with those considered to be leaders of the church and shared with them the message I had been preaching to the Gentiles. I wanted to make sure that we were in agreement for fear that all my efforts had been wasted and I was running the race for nothing. And they supported me and did not even demand that my companion Titus be circumcised, though he was a Gentile. Even that question came up only because of some called some so-called believers there, false ones, really, who were secretly brought in. They sneaked in to spy on us and take away the freedom we have in Christ Jesus. They wanted to enslave us and force us to follow their Jewish regulations. But we refused to give in to them for a single moment. We wanted to preserve the truth of the gospel message for you. And the leaders of the church had nothing to add to what I was preaching. By the way, the re reputation as great leaders made no difference to me, for God has no favorites. Instead, they saw that God had given me the responsibility of preaching the gospel to the Gentiles, just as, just as he had given Peter the responsibility of pre preaching to the Jews. For the same God who worked through Peter as the apostle to the Jews also worked through me as the apostle to the Gentiles. In fact, James, Peter and John, who were known as pillars of the church, recognized the gift God had given me, and they accepted Barnabas and me as their co-workers. They encouraged us to keep preaching to the Gentiles while they continued their work with the Jews. Their only suggestion was that we keep on helping the poor, which I have always been eager to do. And now here is the reading portion. When Saul became Paul, his life turned upside down. It was anything but rosy. The people he used to work for now hated him, and the people he belonged to now were skeptical, even afraid of him. This didn't deter Paul, the man who would later write to live as Christ and to die as gain. All that mattered to him was Jesus, and the salvation through grace he had received. He did not care that he was not immediately welcomed in as one of the twelve who had walked with Jesus. He was no longer looking for prestige and position. He was looking for Jesus. Paul spent years doing ministry on his own, and during that time, he grew confident in his call to reach the Gentiles, those who had not been a part of God's chosen people, the Jews. What stands out to me in this passage is Paul's insistence that he wasn't teaching what he had learned from the other disciples. 
While this sounds strange at first, I realize that he's making sure that all of the glory goes to God. It was the Holy Spirit who taught Paul. Paul had not walked with Jesus while he was on the earth, yet he was given the same revelations that had been given to the other disciples who had been with Jesus. What a testament to the relationship you and I can have with our risen Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, through the power of the Holy Spirit. Has God called you to do something? Are you only willing to serve him if it involves a claim, position, and acceptance? Or are you interested in serving Christ in Christ alone? We pray that all of us will be interested in serving Christ in Christ alone. Have a great day. Bye. Bye.